Welcome to Jess Nicole Handmade. This is my third episode. I'm Jessica, and this is the podcast where I share the creative projects that I'm currently working on. Those usually include sewing, crochet, and knitting, and sometimes block printing, and my newest favorite, embroidery. So I'll be sharing some of those with you today. Truly, my goal is to make as many of the items that I wear in my body and have in my home that I can, and I'll be sharing most of those here. So I hope that you'll join me in creating a handmade life. So I'm going to start out by showing you some of the finished things that I've made and first of all what I'm wearing. I made myself a pair of overalls and I absolutely love them. This is actually the first time I've tried wearing them in this like 90s style. I don't know if it looks ridiculous. I know that my parents thought it looked ridiculous in the 90s when I used to wear overalls like this but I don't know I'm giving it a try because the the lining is so cute. This lining is from Twig and Moth and it's available in her Spoon Flower store and I'll definitely link that below so that you can check it out. It is so sweet. Um, and I love it as the lining for these because it it's, a, it's like a unexpected little pattern on the inside and the outside is, is very basic and simple. So I made these overalls out of a Nevada linen which I picked up from Stone Mountain Fabric and the pattern is the dungarees out of the Roberts collection and I really love that pattern collection I'm planning on making the top out of it and and probably the the skirt version of the of the dungarees so um, yeah I love how the how they turned out they were so comfortable it was a pretty simple make, um, took a lot of fabric, but that's the way it goes when you make a whole garment. Um, yeah, I'm used to making small things. I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with working with larger pieces of fabric and making garments for myself. And this was a really great step into making my own clothes because it's, it's a functional garment and yeah it's just really gratifying to make these. The next finished object that I'd like to show you is the second bucket hat that I made from the Merchant Mills bucket hat pattern and I showed this I think in my second episode. I made one for my mom for Mother's Day. She absolutely loved it but she flipped it inside out and wears it with the lining on the outside because she likes the fabric of the lining so much. Anyway, I made this one for myself and I'm really glad that I did because it's the second time that I made this hat and I made a few mistakes on the first one with little puckers around the edge and this one there's absolutely no mistakes so it was a really good practice for me to make this and I'm definitely going to be making more of these hats. I think I'm going to make the brim a bit wider so that there's more coverage over my face to keep the sun off my face. And so I used a canvas fabric for the outside here and then just block printed it with the stamps that I made myself. And I chose these stamps based on the lining fabric. And yeah, it's the same fabric as I used for the lining of my dungarees here. And yeah, so they kind of, they kind of go together. And I really like it actually. I don't wear hats that often, but I think maybe bucket hats might be my hat. So I'll get a lot of use out of this, this the, with this coming warm weather. Okay, let me show you another finished object. I've been actually really busy because I meant to film this podcast over a week ago and things just kept coming up with, with timing and other projects in, in my taking up my time. And so I have got quite a backlog of 
craft projects and finished things and things I'm working on. So I will try to not to make this too long, but I've got a few things that I want to show you. So I recently shared a video showing how to make these cloth jar covers. And so they are reversible and they fit um, quite a few different size jars. They're basically for fermentation. So making things like kefir or sourdough starter or any other thing that needs an open air fermentation, but this just helps keep the bugs and dust out and they're cute. So I shared a video on this channel showing how, to, how I made these and I will link that here. And I also made a little template. These are really simple to make, but I just thought to make it even easier, I would make a printable template. So this is available for download for free and I'll link that below too. What else? Oh, and then my most recent video that I shared on this channel was another free pattern. Well, that was a free template, but this is a free pattern. And I made, so here, this little pattern, I like to print it as a booklet. You can print it on regular eight and a half by 11 size paper, or just keep it digital because it's a PDF. Um, but I like to print my sewing and crochet patterns as these little booklets. And that's really easy to do in, in the PDF printing software. Anyway, this is the wood grain looking bowl that I made. And the pattern actually shows how to make all three of these sizes. And if you're new to crochet or just want a like a really simple project, I really recommend it. It's a very simple make and really useful, I think. It's it's a way that I've been crocheting for decades and it's kind of my go-to way of making any three-dimensional object and so I use that method to make these sweet little bowls. So that video is up on my channel now as well. So next I will show you sort of a an in-between a work in progress and finished object because I've made the samples for a another video and pattern set that I'm going to be making and that is crocheted mushrooms. I've been crocheting mushrooms for years and I wanted to show how basically how easy you can make all these different mushroom shapes with just a few different techniques. So I am making a pattern showing how to make all of these and a video to go along with it. It's so simple, but they come out so cute. I mean, there there are so many ways that these are useful, right? Um, as cat toys, my cat loves anything made out of wool. Um, and children's toys or display. I'll show you a way that I displayed it recently as well. So I came up with the idea that I wanted to make a little display to use them as a display. So here is my idea. This is my shorthand that I use to, to, to make patterns. And then I, then I write it out. Crows. Why are you here? Easily, easily distracted by wildlife. I have a big window right here, um, out to my backyard and have a big tree that we get a lot of crows sitting in and today they decided to all a family of them um yeah i keep an eye on the crows in my neighborhood i think there's actually two parents like two sets of parents and then they're babies well they're not babies anymore it's really hard to tell just by looking at a crow baby by the time they come out of i think they're fledglings by the time they come out of the nest because they almost look exactly like their parents. There's just a little bit of fluff on them that kind of sets them apart. And they wait around to get fed. So that, that also sets them apart. Anyway, they 
This is the first time I've seen them all fly down into my yard. It's kind of unusual because I have cats and they don't usually come on to the ground in this yard. So here's what I made. This little display of little crocheted moss and attached the mushrooms to this crocheted base. And I put a piece of cardboard down in there so that it's really sturdy. And yeah, so I'm sure lots of people would come up with a lot of reasons to make mushrooms and I'm really looking forward to sharing this pattern set. This one's my favorite. This is the one that I made for the video. I already shot the footage for it and this is the one that I make in the video. So I show you how to make this top, how to attach the stipe in the underside, and then how to make this little, what's it called? So that is coming soon. And then the next thing that I've been working on is embroidery. So I have been really interested in learning embroidery and certain techniques. And I really wanted to start with stump work embroidery which I believe I spoke about in this last episode, in episode two of this podcast. Um, but the more I looked into that, I mean, I definitely still want to do it, make stump work moths, so like a 3D embroidered moth, and I'm going to do that. But I've decided to start with moss because it was the two different things that I wanted to embroider, moss and a 3D moth. and the. 3D moth is much more time consuming and there's a little bit more room for error in that one. So I've started embroidering moss. I'm using DMC thread in these colors. These just beautiful different shades of moss green. I chose these just by going into the aisle of my local fabric store where there's all the colors and just grabbing the ones that just grabbing the ones that drew my eye and look like moss. So these are what I came up with. And let me show you what I've done so far. So this one was the first one that I tried. And on here, you can see that there's actually quite a few different things going on. I've got the embroidery floss and I have some hand dyed gauze in there as well as wool roving which is underneath it and that's a it's this green wool roving let me show you i used this wool roving and i needle i pulled a piece off needle felted it a little bit to make it a little more firm so that it would mound up a bit and so that's what's underneath this and then i tried a second piece because i have some ideas for how i'll be using this moss and this is what I've got so far. Now, I used a piece of felt cut into this sort of just like oblong shape and then put a piece of wool roving over that. So what I'm using as far as embroidery techniques to make this moss is a whole bunch of French knots. The thing that I like most about it is that the French knots, it's actually better if they're not perfect. And it became, there's a technique to making French knots look really clean and moss is great for practicing French knots because they don't need to look really clean. They can be all different shapes and sizes and look a little wonky and I like that about it. Then it looks more natural like moss. And then I'm doing this other technique where I have my thread on the needle and kind of twist it and let it wrap around itself and I work with that to make, I think you can see it there, the little, these little pieces that stick up. And then I saw a video here on YouTube and I will link that below so that you can check it out too. You probably noticed that little kind of fluffy bit on there. And that is my way of making it look like there's lichen on here along with the moss. And for that, I cut little, like little squiggly pieces out of this stretchy 
jersey fabric that's this kind of like sage green color I like I liked it because it looked like the same color as lichen is and then I just kind of rolled that in my hands and kind of stretched it and made it like curl over on itself and then I bunched it up and stitched it on so those are the techniques that I am doing to make this embroidered moss and it's been really fun I'm learning a lot about embroidery and how time consuming it is or how it can be quite tedious especially just making a whole bunch of French knots over and over I did want to show too the hand dyed gauze which I just love I bought this gauze I bought this gauze probably 10 years ago from an Etsy shop that I don't think it's in existence anymore and if it is they don't make this anymore so I'm gonna have to figure out how to dye gauze myself because I've been hanging on to these and snipping little pieces off once in a while to add to different projects and a long time ago what I used to do well not that long ago because I have one of them here this is this is one of my hand carved stamps that I block printed onto this canvas fabric and then used the this gauze and stitched it on and kind of bunched it up to make it look like moss growing on the side of the log and so yeah I used to sell these and this is kind of one this is just one of my one of the ones that I had left that I keep as a little reminder of how cute these were I might start making some more let me know below in comments if you think that you'd like to get one of these I, I remember one of one of my customers a while back she she purchased a few for her nursery so she was having a new baby and she wanted a woodland themed nursery and has some of those in her baby's room i'm having fun with these little experiments because i have some plans for bigger projects that i'm going to do with this embroidered moss and so i have to practice quite a bit and i'll figure out what to do with these little pieces i think they're going to be usable uh yeah I'm excited to show you what I'm gonna make with these. And the embroidered moss actually reminds me of something else that I'd like to share, which is my Kofi page. So I just started building out a Kofi page for Jess Nicole Handmade, and I haven't completely decided what I'm going to do with it, but so far I'm going to be sharing my free patterns there. So whenever I have a free pattern, I'll go ahead and put it in the Kofi shop as free and then you can either purchase it like just for free as nothing or um, pay what you like it has that option as well so to give me a little donation for my time and effort in making the pattern and then I'm also going to be using it to give sneak peeks of projects that I'm working on and I'm thinking like it's great for projects that are kind of a long-term project that I haven't shared anywhere else. So right now, there is a peek at the project that I'm going to be using the embroidered moss with. So you can go ahead and check out my page to see that if you'd like. I'll link it below. I can not show you my Augustin 16 sweater. I actually put that aside for now because I have so many other projects that I'm working on and it's come to a point, like a good stopping point because I cast off the skirt and now I have this cute little mini skirt looking piece. So my next step is to start on the sleeves. And with the weather being so warm and so many other ideas swirling in my brain, I have decided to set this aside to work on some other projects. So it is happily resting in my basket back here waiting for when I want to get started on it again. So since they're on the table I might as well mention my project bags. These two are my favorite. This little guy is still in my shop so if you would like to get this one it is still available but this one I took off. I love these bags. I've been using them for quite a while. I started making project bags I think I don't know a few months ago and I really like them. Before this I had used baskets around the house or tote bags and those work. 
but having dedicated bags for my work is is really it's fun and kind of like what's the word it feels special that the project that's inside has its own special bag and one of the things I really like doing especially with the smaller bag and I have both sizes in my shop of different fabric patterns I have a mushroom one and a woodland pattern with pine cones and pine needles on it so those are both still available in my shop a few of those are left but with this smaller bag one of my favorite things to do with it is to put my yarn that I'm working on I have a ball winder to make like the cake of yarn I actually prefer hand winding it and having it in these kind of old-fashioned balls so I leave my yarn in the bag cinch it up and then just work from there so that is another thing that they're really good for so lastly I want to show you a few of the things that I've recently picked up um, one of them is this ball of yarn here this was actually a gift from my mom for Mother's Day so she got it a couple weeks ago and I let me see she went to a street fair and found a booth from this designer this is her information if you'd like to see more of what she does this yarn was dyed using mushrooms which is kind of perfect and the colors are so pretty very muted and very much my kind of aesthetic so the next thing I wanted to show you that I recently got was a sewing pattern this was prompted by the realization that I wasn't quite ready to embroider moths. I found this pattern by Willow Wynn of her hand sewn moths. And I thought this was just a perfect in between for me to sew a moth and add a little bit of embroidery to it. And so it'll help me practice embroidery and get beautiful moths in the end. So. I love this pattern and I'll be making moths very soon. Okay, and then there's something else. I have to get up and grab it. I was so excited when it arrived in the mail. Okay, so these are made by Botanica Tinctoria. And these trims, threads, and laces that are all hand dyed with botanical dyes. And I have wanted to get these for so long and I finally finally did now that I'm actually sewing garments and feel like I'll be able to use them. This is insertion lace which I love. Um, um, if you don't know what that is it's when you see a garment with like lace in like, set into the garment. I have quite a few garments with that like tops and things. Anyway insertion lace in this beautiful olive kind of mossy green color and then I got insertion lace in this gray and then a trim lace in the gray as well and then I got even more from this shop and I got these little shishiko threads because I like to crochet my own borders onto things so this beautiful over color and the gray to match the trims that I already have. I think they're so, so pretty. And I will be using them very soon. I have a few things that I would like to add insertion lace to a few patterns that I have. And um, yeah, a lot of ideas of what to do with these. And I'll link her shop below too and um, so that you can check out these. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's it. So thank you so much for spending this time with me today. If you like this video, please do give it a like. And if you'd like to see more like this, you can subscribe because I will be sharing more podcasts very soon. I have a lot of crafts that I have in the works. I wish you a wonderfully creative day. I still haven't oiled this chair.